Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you tonight. As always, we thank you for being our Father. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you've done on the cross for us. Amen. We don't take it for granted. There's a lot we're not utilizing out of it, Lord, but we don't take it fully for granted. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for being here, for anointing Miss Margaret tonight to minister your word to us. Whatever you put on her heart, Lord, we come to hear it. You said if you honor me, I'll honor you. And you said if we receive the minister that sent to us, we're, it's like we're receiving you. Lord, we receive her tonight. We receive what you put in our heart. And we thank you for it. We thank you for sending her. And we thank you for being here with us in Jesus' name. Um, let me bust your bubble just a little bit again. I, <clears throat> I mean, I hate we're having to deal with this pandemic, as they call it. I know you're not going to get sick. But we've had a church in Waverly Hall. They, they had to shut. They shut them completely down because I don't know how many of them. Eight or ten of them got sick. So, like I said, when I see everybody that a common cold doesn't affect you, then you know it won't bother me to see you shaking hands and hugging and doing all that again. But let's just uh, if somebody were to get sick, we'd have to shut the whole church down. So it's not worth that. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. It's just not worth it. And I hate to ask you not to do that. I'm not going to sick, get sick. You're not going to get sick. But <clears throat> I don't know that everybody's faith is in that area. And we can talk big, but the walk's a little bit different. So we don't want to be shut down. And uh, we don't want anybody to get sick. And we're walking in the faith that we have. I believe everybody's faith is trying to be there. But let's just be careful if we can. Is that all right? I don't mean to be rude, but uh, let's just let's do what we need to do for a little while longer, okay? Because if we don't, I don't want them to come out here and shut us down, and I'd hate to go to jail. That's right. So, but anyway, with all that passed, I think most everybody knows Miss Margaret and uh, Jake. But anyway, Miss Margaret's going to minister for us tonight, and we thank you for coming. Thank you. Amen. I felt like the Lord wanted me to have her here, and that's why she's here. Thank you. <laughs> well, I may change my mind. I'm, no, I'm teasing. <laughs> You know, it's a lot different in your home. Really, it feels good. But thank you. Thank you. And, and um, since Pastor Bruce has already led us in prayer, um, I always would have Jake hold up a hand signal when I had gone longer than I needed to. And he'd just, you know, because I never could find the clock. And um, uh, we, we just constantly never had a clock, it seems like. so. But when I was asking the Lord about coming tonight and what he would have me, speak on it was it was um, first thing he said was that uh, the body of Christ needed Wednesday night services Amen. because um, you know he, he started giving me an example and so I stuck with that example and the example was uh, he asked me what happened to a basketball when it wasn't pumped up very well and I said well you know you can't shoot and your aim is certainly off and um, and then I just thought about that and I thought well Maybe that's really one of the main purposes for our Wednesday night services is because of us being so human that we just have that tendency to kind of let the air out of us by the midweek. And we need the body of Christ to kind of encourage each other. So that's why it's good to, to meet so that we can be in the Word of God together as a family. But uh, uh, I went over with that and I said, well, you know, Lord, it's kind of like an air mattress then. I mean, we've slept on our share of air mattresses, and you probably have too. Only people that like that are grandchildren, and they like to turn them, if you got little boys, they like to make them into a, a wrestling ring and jump, and they don't last long. But they're very uncomfortable if the air is not just right in them. And the third example was a tire, and I thought, well, I know what that feels like. It's just, you're not going very far. It just flat won't work. So without the services of the Lord to kind of revive us and to pump us up, then that's kind of the way we get. The, we're, we get uncomfortable sometimes, and we have all kinds of excuses of not serving. We don't, um, we miss the mark, so to speak, or what we're aiming at. We just don't get it, and then we just, we just flat get out of, you know, wanting to be in the service of the Lord. So I'm um, going with this tonight. It's called uh, growth inhibitors. And I started seeking the Lord on what happens in our spiritual growth and what all are the reasons that we have such difficulty with spiritual growth in our life. 
And I was led to, in the Bible, first of all, to look up the word inhibit or inhibitor. Because if we sometimes, we all would probably be able to give a meaning, but sometimes when you look a word up, for me, it just helps me to get a bigger picture of the whole uh, point that I'm trying to make. So an inhibitor or to inhibit means a thing which stops us or slows us up or uh, anyone or something. It prevents something from happening, such as process, making uh, a process of progressing down the road. And I think that's why the Lord used the, uh, the thing about a basketball, an air mattress, and a tire. If you don't have what you need, you're not going far, so you're not going to make any progress. So inhibit, to hinder, to restrain, to prevent, to make someone very self-conscious and unable to act in a relaxed way. Now, I might have that title by the time I go home tonight. I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> but three of the main growth inhibitors are what keeps us from growing. The Bible tells us it's the devil. And unfortunately, the devil is the number one. We don't like for him to be number one on anything. But he is our biggest problem in the body of Christ is just the devil. And not many people want to talk about the devil because most people just, you know, a lot of the philosophy now is that if you're just a good person, everybody's going to heaven. And, and uh, uh, they don't think about other things, about what the Word of God really says. So I looked up this. First I thought, now, Lord, I don't like to give the devil like he's priority in anything. So I wanted to find a scripture that really just kind of just, you know, sometimes I'll say, I don't know why we say this, but it knocks our socks off, you know. We, we say little things that kind of make us feel like that's really, really good. So I, I looked at this scripture, and I want to share it with us um, because the, the devil always does have a plan to destroy us, but God has got the ultimate plan. So in 1 Peter uh, chapter 5, verses 10 and 11, it says, But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory, by Christ Jesus, after you've suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory. So in other words, everything about this, the God of all grace, who has called us, is all done by Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can perfect us. He's the only one that can establish us. And he's the only one that can really strengthen us in the world that we live in. And so to him, in fact, to God Almighty, to Jesus Christ, all the glory and all the dominion forever and ever. So that's his excellent plan for us. This, you know, that he is going to share his eternal glory with us because of Jesus Christ. And if we can just get that message as a group of believers, you know, it just encourages us so much. Look at all the things. I mean, that's why we would say it knocks our socks off. It's so uh, exciting, the fact that Jesus loves us so much that he is willing to share his glory with us. And not just share it, but give it to us. And so that's exciting to me to find a scripture like that before I start talking about somebody that we don't like. And um, so the God of all grace has given us this gift. And he accomplished it through his death and his resurrection. And so grace is God's love. It's, his, it's given to us on behalf of um, the Father. It's given freely. It's his forgiveness, it's his favor, it's his acceptance. And you know, in today's world, we don't forgive very much. We don't have very much favor sometimes for other people. And we certainly don't have very much acceptance for, and I'm talking about we don't have much acceptance to those that are Christians that are having some type of a battle that they're struggling with and they hadn't gotten over to that victory mark in it, that it still is something that throws a, 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 you know, a flat tire on them, so to speak. And we don't have very much acceptance in the body of Christ. And then the word says, and he abides with us with the power of heaven to meet every need. Now, I'm going to tell you, that'll get you up. When nothing else will get you up to know that, that God Almighty is abiding with us 
and that he is giving us this power of heaven to meet every kind of need that we come into contact with. So every need that I'm going to have this week, God is going to give me that. He's going to be with me and help me. And that's what we can claim. So when it gets really tough and things get real discouraged and you've got all these problems, you know, what are we going to do with kids? What are we going to do with grandkids? What are we going to do about finances? What are we going to do about help? Then we can turn around and say, but you know what? we got the one in us that abides with us, and he's got that power. And that power is enough to meet any need and every need that I've got. So we could say that the Lord himself restores and repairs and completes and mends and equips us. And then he establishes us with the truth. So that's kind of what I wanted to get a point of before we started talking about the devil's plan. So the number one, as I said, growth inhibitor is the devil. And the devil's job that he has is to gain victory. And the, unfortunately, the ones that he's going to gain victory of and over are the ones that give him that victory. If we don't resist him, and we're very familiar with this scripture in 1 Peter 5, 8 that says, to be sober and to be vigilant because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion. He seeks whom he can devour. We are warned that he walks about. We are warned that he roams about. And yet we've got world people in the world that don't even believe he exists. And, you know, it always gives us the example of when a lion hunts. And you think about this. I, I mean, a lion is a very fierce animal. And when he hunts, even though he's big and strong and all these things are, that are the character of him, he's going to go after something weaker, you know. I mean, he's going to look for that weak sower. So your view of the line is not sometimes, I mean, I'm not talking about our um, Jehovah El Shaddai. I'm talking about the devil being looked at as a line, that he's after somebody weak. And he's after somebody that has not got the victory. And so he goes after a lesser than what's as strong as he is. And you wouldn't think that about a, a fierce animal like that. You would think that he at least would go after another lion, big as he is, and, and uh, that he sets up traps so that he can catch that little one or that weak one when they come walking along. And so I think sometimes we get so busy we forget that that's what the devil is really doing for us. He's setting up a trap from the minute we get up. He's setting up a trap. You know, I've been, uh, many of you know, I've started keeping our little uh, new grandson that's uh, six months old and, and so I have a, long, a little drive in the mornings and the first Monday when I went in I, I left the house a little before five and, and I got back there and the broads I guess I don't know why it's called booger bottom I don't know that story but I call it that booger bottom section because Jake will always say where are you and I don't know the names of it I just say I'm back in the booger bottom section and so he's supposed to know where I am and I thought, how dark, and you know, how early in the morning, and how I just thought, oh, I don't even like this, Lord. And so you're, it's a great time to pray in the Spirit, let me tell you. And it's a great time to pray because nobody's in the car but you. And it's just, it's, it's just things like that. But uh, I said, oh, Lord, I just need that reassurance today that you're with me. And all of a sudden, a song, I, I know we had it in the Methodist church when I was a child, but um, just when I need him most, that may not be the name of it, but it says just when I need him most, just when I need him most, Jesus is there. And I believe, I didn't look it up, but my words were to comfort and care. And so that just came up in my spirit. What a comfort that was. Oh, I thanked him all through that ride of those three roads, I call them. And so, you know, the devil's out there to try to trip you, but God is bigger because we just read that. And he's got everything we need and he's willing to give us that power and he's willing to share that with us. So the devil can be defeated. Now the devil's goal is not just to maybe bite us and slow us down and cause a little bit of destruction. 
But the Bible warns us that his job is, is that he takes upon himself is to kill us, to destroy us completely, to get us out of here. And so no wonder that the Bible says that he comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. And the path that he wants to do is he starts out a little bit sometimes smaller where he wants to hurt you. You know, we get our feelings hurt. We get hurt some type of a way to bring discouragement. And I thought about Dwayne, you know, that whatever fell on his foot. You know, that was to get him to think, well, you know, here I am out here trying to make a living for my family, and then this comes along. But instead, he found him, got him a boot on there, and is going to work and defeating it, and, you know, saying, greater is he that is in me. You know, he's Amen. pushing on. And that's what we've got to do, no matter what circumstance he throws out there. And another thing that we need to be aware of, we find in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, and that about the devil and is that is that he blinds the mind you know if we think about where the mind is what the mind the mind and our will and our emotions and that soulish area that the devil is after that to to really bring havoc in there to just to blind us so that we don't see you know if you're blinded you don't see very well you have to feel you have a smoke screen, so to speak. And so the Bible warns us about that in 2 Corinthians. And another fact on the devil is that he wants us to get to the point where we bow to the circumstances that we are in and the pressures of the force that he's trying to bring against us. And so one way that we can overcome that of him trying to get us to bow down to him by all the negative and harmful and hurtful um, things that he does to us is to turn that around and say, we're gonna take the word of God and we're gonna believe it. And we're gonna take the word of God and we're gonna obey it. And we're gonna take the word of God and we're gonna worship. So there's, there's the word bow and we've turned it around to help us and encourage us instead of just saying, okay, well, I just, I don't wanna to bow to the circumstances, but there's not anything I can do. There's always something that we can do. As long as there's life, as long as there's breath in us, we can do this. We can work as a team, we can work together, we can encourage each other, we can, you know, make phone calls or, or send little messages. You know, we have all this technology now, and sometimes some of that technology is not good stuff, but it's very encouraging sometimes. You, you see people say something about, well, Facebook, you know, I was really encouraged by this, but if we want to, we can look at the circumstances of all evil with that. So in Matthew chapter 4, verses 8 through 10, we think sometimes that Satan doesn't try to come against anybody else, but a beautiful scripture is about Jesus Christ. I mean, he came after Jesus Christ. Satan came after Jesus, but he was strong enough to defeat him, and we can be too. So when we grow in the Lord as the Father, you know, when Jesus said, I do just what I see the Father do, well, that was his reason. I mean, he set his mission. He set his goal. He set his mind. And if we as the body of Christ will set our mind on the fact that we're not bowing to those circumstances and we're not going to come away from that and let him destroy us, but we're going to turn it around and we're going to do the things that Jesus has told us to do, then we start getting some spiritual growth. And it's very important for spiritual growth. You know, you can go to church. I mean, you can carry big Bibles. We can do everything we want to, you know, in that part and be there and get the check mark by our name, the check mark by our offering, the check mark by reading the Bible. But those check marks aren't, aren't going to be anything if we don't have that relationship. And so the way to grow in that relationship with Jesus is to get that relationship of studying his word and spending time talking to him and growing. And then as we grow, then the lion comes around, or the bear, or the, surf, the snake, or whatever. You know, if, if we look at it in the, in the world as far as things, health things, job things, financial things, as they come along, if we start growing, 
we have the power and the ability through Jesus to resist those things. But if we don't open this Bible and we don't ever learn, then we're not going to grow up. And I love the uh, Message Bible, and uh, it's talking about resisting, and I wanted to read it tonight if I can get to that. Let me see. I think I marked it. I don't remember what the song was, but it's a secular song. You know, it's a worldly song. And um, I was going to ask Jake, because I never do remember their names. You know, I don't know who these people are. And, you know, people will ask if you know this, um, you know, actress or actor. And I have no clue. I mean, I, I, I just don't know. You know, I truly don't know. And I don't know who sang anything except I can rem thank you Jesus that I remembered just when I needed most but um, listen to this but there was a song and it said uh, something about I think it was a country song it said um, that just about does it don't it or something like that now I don't know what else it said and I don't know what it was talking about but I liked this in the message Bible tonight when I was reading Ephesians chapter 6 and I was in the 10th verse, and it says, And that about wraps it up. God is strong, and he wants you strong. So take everything that the Master has set out for you, well-made weapons and the best materials, and put them to use so you'll be able to stand up to everything that the devil throws your way. This is no afternoon athletic contest. I like that. But it's a, a life-or-death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. And this is forever while we're here on earth. So be prepared. You're up against far more than you can handle on your own. See, sometimes we can become so spiritually high and mighty in, in what we think of ourselves that we just, uh, we're just nothing because we think that we can stand against all the attacks and that we don't need anybody, that we know these, the scriptures and we know this and we know that and we even attach a, some fancy title to our name. But in the long run, it's whether we can handle taking on the devil and that we've already learned how to resist him and that we know that we can't do it all by ourselves. Right. So take all the help you can get. Isn't that great? Take all the help you can get. Don't be shy about taking help. Every weapon that God has issued you. So that's when it's all over but the shouting when you're still on your feet. I loved that. Truth, righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation are more than words. Learn how to apply them. You're going to need them throughout your life. You know, a lot of times people say, well, I got saved in so-and-so, and, and that's it. No, you're going to need this all through our life. And I'm telling you, he's coming after us. It's not an if he's coming or a maybe he's, he's coming. And he's going to test you. And he's going to try to see whether you're going to give in to that test or whether you're going to have some resistance and call for the forces first from your heavenly father. God, I can't make it today. I do not. I tell the Lord all the time, Lord, I do not. I think we've been married 52 or either 52 years, 53 years. I say, Lord, I do not know how to be a wife. Do you hear me, Lord? I don't know how to be a wife today. Amen. That's when we're having a bad day, <laughs> you know. Or I'll say, you know, like today, I thought, I cannot be a grandma. Yeah, we were crying and, you know, we're trying to get used to the mama and the daddy are go have gone to work and here's, this grandma and and you know when our older grandson was a baby I think I was like barely in my 50s and so your hands work better and you know those little snap things they call onesies oh they're just a treat if for er you know thinking I'm gonna get this and so fine I mean you'll see where I'm going I don't know how to be a wife I don't know how to be a mother I don't know how to be a grandmother. Now, I may be, have uh, done it or be doing it for a long, long time, but I do not know how to do anything without the Lord's help. And the more that you do and get out there in the world, you, the more you see it. I don't care what kind of titles we have, what kind of degrees we have. We are not sufficient on our own. I don't care if we have scholarships. I don't care if we have money. 
those things are not going to help us to make it in the world. We are going to have to resist the devil. And so when he says that, get that truth, get that righteousness, peace, faith, and salvation. Learn how to apply them. You're going to need them throughout your life. We could go home on that. God's word is an indispensable weapon. This is the message Bible. Isn't it written beautifully? In the same way, prayer is essential in this ongoing warfare. So, so pray hard and pray long and pray for your brothers and pray for your sisters and keep your eyes open. Remember the smoke screen, the veil. He blinds us. Keep your eyes open. Keep your eyes open and keep your, each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. You know, I've, re I've read before, I don't even know where, so uh, a lot of times when the Lord will just give an example out of the, you know, uh, when you're up here or something, uh, like geese. You know, they fly in that row, but I've always heard that if, a, if geese, if one drops out, they don't just leave him laying there or, or leave him when he can't catch up. Somebody drops out with him. Wouldn't that be a wonderful thing to know that as the body of Christ that, that we wouldn't have any um, we wouldn't have any arrogance about ourselves, but we could openly and honestly say, look guys, I need prayer or I need help. I'm having some rough times this week. Or, but instead we just act like you know, I'm okay, you're okay. Yeah, when well, we're not. So keep each other's spirits up so that no one falls behind or drops out. So resist the devil, steadfast, be steadfast in your faith. Know that the same sufferings are experienced by our brothers and our sisters. You know, doesn't he like to tell us, well, you're the only one. You're the only one that's ever done this. You're the only one that's ever had that problem. Yeah, it's because you're not really a Christian. You've never been, I mean, that stuff. And, and if we fall for it, we find ourselves wanting to separate from Christians when that's a lot of our strength that can be poured into us. So we want to do that. So believe, obey, and worship. And believe it or not, that's, uh, a, the Bible talks about in Hebrews 11, 6, it talks about believing. And in 1 John 3, 24, it talks about obeying. And in John 43, it talks about us worshiping the Lord. So be in unity to defeat the devil. You know, I love the book of John. I think that's an excellent book all the way through. But in the 17th chapter of John, it talks about while Jesus uh, praying. And he prays for himself. You know, we have some wrong concepts of that. We need to pray for ourselves. We need to pray for ourselves, for God to help us e individually. We must do that. And then, um, so he, in that chapter also, Jesus then, after he prays for himself, he prays for his disciples. Yeah, yeah he prays for those that are working with him, those that are believers. And then he prays for all believers. And you know, if Jesus is our example of how to fight the devil, then there you go. That's another thing we can do. You know, share that God does have a purpose and a plan. And that he's invested. You know, we, in, we invest in him when we receive him. But he invests in us that he gives us this beautiful, perfect gift and says, here it is. Come and take of me. So when you look at the Bible, you know, and it looks so strange or you don't understand some of the concepts of it, well, sometimes we don't. But sometimes when we look at what Jesus is saying, that he is actually praying for himself and then his disciples and then all believers. So then we can be in unity and we can make known also the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right? Um, so the strategy would be to stay in the Word and bow, right. believe, obey, and worship. And then the second thing that uh, keeps us from growing is living in the world. And unfortunately, we're seeing a little bit of everything, and everything goes. 
I didn't see this, but somebody was saying that, told me that in Portland that they, you know, we know they burned the flag, but said they were burning the Bibles also. Yeah. And I, I mean, you know, we didn't ever think that, that we were gonna be, uh, uh, some of us may have believed we were gonna be taken out before we ever saw too much go on, and then others thought that it probably wasn't gonna happen. But I mean, we're living in a sad situation. We've got people that no longer, uh, you know, do you have the freedom? How long will we have our Bibles? But it's the world system refers to our values and our mindsets, our philosophies of life. You know, we all grow up and we think, well, you know, we want our, college, our children to grow up and go to college. And then sometimes, unfortunately, everybody doesn't believe like you do. And some of the craziest philosophies in the world can be released over our own children. And we've got to realize this. And um, Jesus said in Mark 8, he said, the world suggests, you know, it's, I'm paraphrasing this, he's talking about the world suggests everything different than what we would want to suggest. It suggests that you've got to have all this stuff. It requires you to take the world without God. That's what they're doing in places like this that are burning the Bibles. They're taking this word that we, that is precious to us, that we want to live by, we want to know, and we want to grow in, and they're saying, this is just some crazy philosophy, and we're not going to have any, anything to do with that. And so if we neglect this, then we're going to neglect that relationship with the Lord. So if we want to fight what we're seeing out there, it's going to take some praying. It's going to take some separating yourself from it. It's real hard to be the unpopular one sometimes. We all have gone through that. You know, finally we get to the point it doesn't really matter. But boy, does it matter when you're young and you think that's just it. And how many heartaches have we held and put our arms around our children when they've been left out? You know, I can still remember, you know, a birthday party. I still remember it. I guess maybe it bothers me. I need to take that one to the Lord probably, but I couldn't have been but a child and uh, young in grade school and, and everybody was going to the party. Everybody was invited to the party. You know how the devil loves things like that? And boy, he'll get on both of your shoulders and down that pity party path you'll go. Everybody else, and everybody's going, and everybody's invited, and everybody, everybody. And then you grow up and you learn that those everybody's were not what you really wanted anyway. They were somebody that, thank you Jesus, that he was trying to separate us from sometimes. And so the strategy is that growth inhibitor is when we get caught up too much in the world. We want everything Material things don't cause us to go to hell. Material things don't cause us to lose our relationship. But if we put those material things above every other thing of God, everything that instructs us about the Word of God, if being accepted and being the best and being the richest or, or whatever is more important to you than having that right, right relationship, then you're gonna have a problem with the world. You're gonna have a big problem with the world. So we have to develop that. Romans 12, two talks about renewing and reprogramming our minds. Because, you know, a lot of us, when we grow up, we may have learned a wrong concept from parents or grandparents and thought that you were supposed to do like that. And then you get saved and you begin to read the Bible and you begin to see that that's not really what we were supposed to do in the first place. And we go back and we have to repent about that and then we need to change our mind. You know, we change the direction we're going in. We change. So we've got to have our minds reprogrammed and we've got to have them renewed against the pull of the world. That's one to beware of. If we're sending our children off every day to school or if they're homeschooling or whatever they're doing, we need to pray that the pull of the world does not get a hold of our children. And you can tell that, you know, when your child is slipping some. And, and if we're not the example to keep them from slipping, we don't really have much room to talk. 
But if we will recognize that the world and all of its vain philosophies and all its mindsets and all the values, you know, there's, there's no respect sometimes. All these things. And if we'll guard against them and be wise and be ready for them and then allow his power to transform our minds and redirect the things of God in your life. And then, so to gain the victory, we know we gotta renew. We gotta renew our mind against the world. And then the third growth inhibitor is our flesh. Yeah. Now, it's more than our skin, you know. It's that carnal nature, or, you know, like um, we think, well, I forgive them, and then we're sitting over there and we're thinking, well, if he comes up to me or she comes up to me and she says this, I'm going to say this. And if he does this, then I'm going to do that. That's that little drive inside of you, that carnal nature. And that's what it is. And that's the third thing in our little service tonight that is going to keep us. It's going to be an inhibitor. It's going to keep us from growing and going in the right way and being successful. And so the tendencies are, you know, the flesh, I mean, it just, it likes everything that's not, that you know, that it shouldn't like. I mean, and it's not even productive. Yeah, you know, it's just not. But we want to use it. We just want to live like we want to. I'll be my own boss. How many have said that? Yeah. I'll do it if I want to. I'll go down this road if I want. Well, I don't care. I'm going to do it anyway. I'll get the cake and I'll eat the whole thing. You know? Yeah, we've said that. Yeah. I don't care. Well, I thought you were trying to cut back on your... I'm eating it tonight. I mean, you know, don't you... Aren't you glad that, you know, the Lord is not... Uh, we think that he's not there. I mean, we used to say, you know, aren't you glad the preacher's not there? But, I mean, you know, to hear some of our comments... But we think that we can do it ourselves. And so Romans 7, and I want to I want to read this, and I think I had it in this Bible and this one. Let me turn it right side up. That'll help us see if I can find the right page. I am not organized. I won't have my little uh, nice. I love how Pastor Bruce has those sheets there. I'm thinking, wow, I wish I I've got scribbly pads and scribbly notes. And, and uh, if you ever see my Bible, I got it written, it, I've, I've got stuff, I've made notes. Anyway, listen to Romans 7. Um, uh, let me start in, um, let me get the right chapter. And this is, um, you know, Paul talking, and he says, uh, talking about the flesh, he says, For I know that in me, that is, in my flesh, that there's nothing good that dwells inside of there. I can identify with that. For to will is present with me. In other words, I want to do right. I say, God, I want to be a good grandmama. You know, I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to do it right. But it says, for to will is present with me, but then how to perform it, that's what is not good. <laughs> I don't find the right way to perform it. For the good that I wish I could do, I do not do. And the evil that I don't want to do, that's what I seem to practice at. Now, if I do what I will, will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but the sin that dwells in me. In other words, we need a bath. You know, if there's something inside of us that is dwelling in us, that is keeping that flesh going like that, then it needs to be brought to the attention of yourself so that you can take it to the attention of God. And we can begin to cry out, for him to sanctify us and for him to separate us from that desire that is there. That the flesh, is, it does not have the right to be in control. It thinks it does. Yet the flesh is never supposed to be in, in control of us. I find that the, the law that evil is present with me, the one who wills to do good. And listen to this. It says, in the spiritual realm, is there any motion or progress? in the pursuit of godliness. So I'm at, we're asking ourselves that question tonight. In the spiritual realm, is there any motion or progress in me? 
do I feel closer to the Lord than I did last year in 2019? Do I feel that I'm growing and, and, and you know, I'm not just putting the Lord on the shelf and because it's a busy time in my life that I'm saying, you know what, I've probably learned enough to get by. I might have learned enough to, you know, Lord, I just really don't have time. But if we're not making progress, then we're not going anywhere. And it says, the call is to commit to godliness with relentless persistence. You know, you know, you can think back in long, long ago, 50 some odd years ago, Jake and I were relentless, persistent about our relationship. You know, now it's like, you want some water? Well, come get it. <laughs> no, most of the time I do better than that. But I mean, you know what I'm saying? If we don't watch it, that's kind of, you know, well, Lord, you know, and we just, but it says we need to be relentlessly Amen. persistent God in order to get delivered of our flesh being in charge. I like that. I like that. I like that a whole lot. So victory comes in all three of these. You know, all these inhibitors, the devil and the, the flesh and the world, our victory is going to come when we avoid overpulling one way. Remember those little games we used to play? We'd have, um, uh, oh, I think Jake and I are so old, we, we had May Day at school. Well, would you mind May Day or something like that where we would have the days where, you know, they call it was in May and you went out and you played and then, and then they got a little bit, uh, uh, they started calling them field days. And, but you had all these events. And you'd have that tug of war, you know, and, and you'd try to see who could pull the other team over to their side. And any time when you got off balance, you know, you quickly, one team was fixing to be pulled to the other side, even if they didn't want to go. And that's kind of an example. The tug of war is inside of us. It's going to be there as long as we have breath here on earth. It's going to be there, that tug of war. And the enemy is going to try to get us to submit to him. He's going to try to get us to bow down to his way. And he's going to do it with, he's going to start off with just some little yank yank stuff and then the hindrances and then they're going to get bigger and then bigger and bigger because he's trying to get you to come over to his team. And if we don't understand that we have got to be relentless, relentless in our pursuit of the Lord, that it can't take the back burner, that it's got to be up front. It's got to, you know, I mean, you know, it, the car is wonderful to talk to the Lord. The shower is wonderful. You know, your cup of coffee in the morning, it's a wonderful time to talk to the Lord. Going to take the trash out, I mean, even the, you know, walking down the road, anything where you separate yourself it doesn't have to be, you know, yes, it's great to have a certain place. It's great to have a certain time. It's great to have your materials and everything. But if you don't have that, don't just say, well, I don't have this and I don't have that. You know, some of us, some ladies may have um, gone to a Bible study where um, the lady was teaching that we, we um, need a place of our own. Yes, we do. We need a place to separate from all the things that are popping in our mind. But she made the point that you know, if you don't have that place, you just don't say, oh, well, I couldn't find any place. You still are held accountable to find that place. Living under the control and living under the influence and living with the, and living with the empowerment of the Holy Spirit is going to help you and it's going to help me. And it's going to be every day that we've got to have that help from the Lord so that we can withstand the things that the devil is bringing our way. I hope that we got something out of this tonight. You know, I didn't time it. I, I hadn't even looked. At, I, really, I see that clock now. I can see it says, anyway, it says something back there. I can't see that far, really.
So it's eight something, something eight. But anyway, you know, I hope we can realize that we don't have to be so still and, and sad and gloom and we can come in here. I love when we get in here and worship. I love to worship the Lord. I love to be wild as I can be. You know, I like being wild with the Lord and, and singing loud and may not be the right voice and I may not remember all the words, but it's my form of worship with him and it's pleasing to him. If he dances over me, why can't I just get a little bit excited over him? and keep some excitement. You know, they tell us to keep excitement. You know, nobody doesn't say keep excitement in your relationship with the Lord. It says keep your excitement in your relationship in your work. Keep your excitement in your relationship with your family. And all these are wonderful things. And with, especially with your spouses. But you know what? If we keep some excitement with Jesus in our life first, then we're going to find that. And I know I'm talking to the choir. I mean, you know, but it encourages us to hear other people. And sometimes, you know, even, you know, our testimony of, of things that we've been through. You know, one of the things, I think I may have shared this, and, and I'm kind of semi-closed and we're going to get there. But uh, one of the things I remember is you know, when I first started seeking the Lord, I mean, I had grown up in the, Bab in the Methodist church, really. And... And um, I loved, you know, growing up and having family, and they were good. I don't know what we would have done if some of those people out there at, at Bethesda Church had not been our comrades and helped us through some of the difficulties that we had as children. And and and, um, but you know, and then I, uh, Jake was Baptist, and I, I remember when I married Jake. I mean, you talk about freaking out. He he was his parents went to this Baptist church, and and. Um, uh, you know, I've never seen somebody pray like this uncle of his. And I'm telling you, I learned that my eyes would stay in my head because on my journey, I've seen a lot of things. But I'm finding that, you know, God is real pleased with getting his attention. And this man was just, he was, it was the most emotional prayer that I ever heard of. And so I remember asking Jake, I said, what was wrong with him tonight? You know, I was as serious. I was very serious. I meant that. I said, what was wrong? What's wrong? What's going on with the family? And Jake was like, what? And I said, why was he crying and talking so loud and got down on his knees? I'd never seen that. I just hadn't. So, you know, sometimes we think, but now it's a privilege to talk loud to God sometimes. It's a privilege to pray. It's a privilege to find the, your knees on the floor and cry out and cry your soul. Your, just cry your heart out to the Lord and let him just minister to you. So we're going to be on this journey. And if we just keep this in mind, don't give up. Be relentless. Be persistent. Know that you're not the only one. Know that everybody goes through some of the same things. May it be a little bit different way. But know that the outcome is this. He's pouring out his gifts to us, his people. He's pouring out his love to us. And get so hungry. You know, you ever just said, Lord, I am so hungry for you. I'm so hungry for you. I just, I love our times. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I mean, he's real, so why won't we be real? And, and just show our emotions to him in our quiet time and, and any other time that the Spirit of the Lord, you know, the Spirit of the Lord just, you want to express yourself to him, then, you know, we don't need to be embarrassed about being in love with the Lord. You know, thank you that he can love us. Thank him that he can love us, the body of Christ, and go about. So... That's our message tonight. Be persistent. Be relentless in our pursuit of the Lord. And don't give up. Don't quit. Keep going. Keep striving. Because the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the same God that we serve. And the Lord Jesus Christ is our friend. 
you know, I, I don't sing, you know, publicly, that's for sure. And I'll get back there and I, I wondered if Dennis moved down because he's hearing me sing out <laughs> back there. You know? But uh, I remember back, uh, I think it was in 2012, I, I wrote it down in my Bible. But the Lord gave me just this little chorus and I, I just can, you know, it was Jesus, Savior, friend and devoted one. My Jesus, my Savior, I come to thee. You're special and lovely and oh how beautiful. My Jesus, my Jesus, I come to thee. And I remember that I remember him giving me that song. And another time I remember I was putting on my makeup. Ladies, I'm I'm be, I was putting on my makeup. Let's not be so religious. And um I was sitting on a little stool and it was my 50th birthday and I'd been on this real pursuit of the Lord and and I just learned probably about uh, I was in probably in my 40s before I heard much about the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Spirit and all those that's another whole journey and and it's it's more astonishing than the prayer on the knees you know but um, uh, you know and I heard I heard something I just, and I thought, Lord, you know, I wonder why I couldn't just ask for a birthday present from the Lord. And I thought, I'm going to do it. And so I said, Lord, I just want to ask you for a birthday present. And I about fell off the stool because, you know, you'll ask, but you're not prepared. And I heard the Lord say, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you could think or ask according to the power that works in us. I said, whoa, Lord, where is that? <laughs> you see? I mean, just, that's a birthday present from the Lord. I'm telling you, the nothings of the world and the nobodies of the world, God can take and he can transform us into something so that we can say, you're beautiful and you're special and you're lovely. Let me see if I miss those words to that song. Let's see if I wrote it down, I do, I think. I'll give you a minute to do it. Oh, I don't find it right now, but... Um, I just, yeah, here it is. Oh, it was 2007. It says, Jesus, Savior, friend and devoted one. My Jesus, my Savior, I come to thee. You're special and lovely and oh, how beautiful. My Jesus, my Savior, I come to thee. See, those are, those are gold nuggets. You can't buy them anywhere. But he'll give them to us if we'll just ask and be willing to receive and be persistent. You receive this tonight? You receive this word? Then I just release this word to bear fruit in our lives. For God just to use us as his vessels, wherever we go and whatever we do, that we would take the Lord with us and he would be special and lovely and oh how beautiful. If he's not already all those things, he would. But you know, we've walked into a church where Everybody I've run into already knows that, that he's special, he's beautiful, he's our Savior, he's our Lord. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this night. I thank you, Father, for your word. I pray, Father, that it will grow fruit in our life and that we will be changed forever and ever and ever into the glory of you, Father God. We bless your holy name. We praise you. We honor you, Father God. We honor you with our lips, Father God, and we thank you that you never leave us nor forsake us, Father God. Lord, I pray for each and every person here tonight. I bless them. I pray the blood of Jesus over us, Lord, spiritually and physically and mentally and emotionally and socially, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that through every one of those things that you will take us and you will guide us and you will direct us. We love you so, Father, and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. You know, there's, uh, there's nothing better than spending time with the Lord. If you, if you haven't been there, if you have never tasted of the Lord's glory 
you're missing something. Once you ever get a taste of his glory, you'll never be satisfied without it. I mean, there's so much stuff in the world to get our attention. And that's, that's, what, it's, that's what it's developed to do. It's to get our attention. It's to draw us away from the Lord. It's to keep us from his presence. In his presence is what? Fullness of joy. Overflowing, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. David said, "My, he, I wonder how many times he sat out on the side of those hills out there over those sheep, and he just worshipped the Lord. And he wrote, my cup runneth over. Amen? When your cup is running over, somebody else, it'll get on them. Amen? But to be able to, to deal with ourselves, to deal with the world, and to deal with the enemy, you're right. I mean, that's it. We have to just spend time with him. And if that's a, uh, you know, it's not an effort for me to go home and spend time with my wife. It, you know, it's not a chore to me. Well, I got to stay. You know, boys, I can't go with you today because I got to spend time with my wife. No, but uh, sometimes people feel like their flesh, your flesh will always draw back. But I tell you what, if you if you'll spend enough time and be persistent, as Miss Margaret was saying, if we can be persistent enough and put some of this stuff to the side, uh, your flesh will even start enjoying being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. It'll start getting overjoyed, and your problems will seem like they've vanished away. Right. I am my happiest. Tammy knows it. I am the very happiest when I spend all day when I can just spend hour after hour with the Lord. You know, my problems don't always go away, but, but when I'm able to spend time with him, it's as if they're gone away because what? I know he's going to take care of me. Right. I know I don't have a, I know I don't have to worry about it. I know he's just going to take care of it. Amen? Right. He will take care of you. But if we sit and focus on our problems all day, instead of, you know, we can, Meditation is faith in reverse. Meditation on the problems, let's put it that way. It's faith in reverse. But if we'll meditate on his word and his presence, all you got to do is start looking at the word and just start declaring that word over and over, and all of a sudden things will start changing. Amen? Good word tonight. Thank you. I appreciate you coming and, and delivering that word, and, and Jake made it through it, didn't he? I thank you for being here. Is anybody... Anybody got anything to add tonight? I just like to say I enjoyed it tonight. I've been studying this week. I've been in Matthew, one of my favorite places, uh, chapter 12, verse 37. Kind of goes along with what Miss Margaret was talking about. It said, For by thy word thou shalt be justified, by thy word thou shalt be convinced. Yep. Depends on what you say about it. What you say about it depends on how much time you've been spending and where you've been spending it at. Yep. That's right. And then what you say about it is going to determine how your joy goes. If you, if you say the negative and you talk the negative and you talk the problem, um, I mean, we have to be responsible. It's not irresponsible to, to maybe sit down and talk with somebody about the problem and say, now help me pray with this, about this. What? How do I need to, Lord, how do I need to deal with this? But uh, the more you talk the problem, the more your joy is going to be drained out. But the more you just sit and talk the word, what did the word say about it? The more your joy is going to come. Let me just say this, and I'll, I'll be through. Um, I mean, we all live in a world with gadgets that's supposed to make our life easier, but it seems to make it more complex, doesn't it? Yeah. But I'll just tell you where I've been uh, lately. It's just there's so much going on. It's always something to take care of, and I like things. I like gadgets just like anybody else, but I have really been praying and asking the Lord, Lord, show me, help me figure out how to get unhooked. I mean, we have responsibility, but some of these responsibilities may just need to go away. You understand? I mean, if we're going to hold on to the world, it's going to be hard to hold on to the Lord if we hold it on to too much of the world. So I just did advise you to do, in a sense, what I've been doing lately, and I have been praying. I've been praying in the Spirit as just worshiping the Lord and saying, Lord, you know what our condition is and I'm praying for you the same way but I'm really praying over me that Lord I need help me show me how to unhook take the things that are not important and get them out of my life 
Because I don't need those. I need you. And you need for me to need him. Amen. And you know what? The world needs for you to spend time with the Lord. Because we have something on the inside of us. And we need to be able to share it with them. Amen. Everybody get what you need to tonight? Anybody anything else? Everybody satisfied? You need prayer tonight? Anybody need prayer? I don't push. I just I just know how I've been sometimes. I've, I've been to meetings and think, Preacher, if you'll hurry up, I know what I come for, you know. Uh, okay, Father, we thank you tonight for being so good to us. Lord, we thank you for sharing your word with us. Lord, we thank you for anointing the lips that, of clay that, that brought this word to us tonight. It's your word, and you're encouraging us. Lord, it's, it's, I can sense it in my spirit every single day. Come up here with me. Come spend time with me. Lord, help us. Help us, Lord, each one of us to recognize the things that are in our life, that are, are sucking the life out of us, that are sucking up the time that we need to be spending with you. And Lord, we thank you that it's always enjoyable in your presence. And we thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for giving us an opportunity. And Lord, I thank you for blessing. You said my words are spirit and they are life. And I thank you, Lord, that you've ministered life to us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Be friendly tonight, amen.